Hello everybody, my name is Ashley and this is Evan. Yep, hello Sunset Hills Baptist Church, we've missed you uh, so much. We're bringing another children's lesson from the book of Daniel. Last time we met, we were learning about Meshach, Chadrach, and Abednego. And at Evan's request, we're going to continue on and learn about Daniel and the lion's den. So first off, let's set up some backstory. Babylon was ruled by King Nebuchadnezzar. That's right, Nebuchadnezzar. It's a really and he young... went into Jerusalem, took a whole bunch of boys who were well-read and very educated, and brought them back to Babylon to train them up to be wise men for his court. Well, four of those boys were Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego, and Daniel. Now, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, we hear about early on in Daniel when they would not worship that golden god. So they ended up, what happened? What did Nebuchadnezzar do to them? They threw Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego into the fiery furnace. Yep, and what happened to them? God, God protected them. They did not die because God was like, shh. And and it was a water shield, I think, to make to make the to put out the fire that got near them. Okay, it's an interesting take. So, over the years, I mean, we want to talk about Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. This happened to them when they were in their mid-teens to early twenties. Now Daniel is in his sixties, so it's been a great deal of time, a lot of time between this story and Daniel in the lion's den. Now, Daniel, over this time period, became a high-ranking government official. He was, con he was well known for being extremely wise, very intelligent, really well read. So he was trying to warn the current king of Babylon that something bad was about to happen. The king didn't want to listen to him. Well, Babylon ended up getting conquered by the Persians. So when the Persians came over and they ousted the old government, you get a new government and a new... A new what? King. A new king. Their king's name was? Darius. Darius. So King Darius did a couple of good things. So when he came to power, what he did was he said, hey, anybody in the kingdom that used to belong to Jerusalem and is still here, um, if you would like to go home, you can. A lot of them did. Daniel stayed. Daniel was like, no, if this is my mission for God, then I'll stay. Yep. And I'm sure he wanted to go home, but he had made a life here. He was an older man. He knew a lot about the people and the town and the country. And I think he really felt like God wanted him to stay there. So anyway, new king comes and he's setting up his new government and he needs people to help him. So he picks three people who are known to be very wise and, and intelligent to be the head administrators of his government. But over time, Daniel showed himself to be more intelligent, more faithful, more dedicated, harder worker. And he was promoted over the other two to be only second in line underneath the king. He was now above his two colleagues. So how do you think that made his two colleagues feel? That Depressing, bad, like no one needed them. And oh. then they were like, I've got to make people, people need me. So I have to get this promotion. So I have, and I know that he's gullible. So I'll just, go. so I'll do this. Because it's very simple. Very. <laughs> anyway, uh, the two men were very jealous of Daniel. They saw him getting a promotion over them. I'm sure they felt like, why did he get a promotion over us? He barely even knows this guy. Why is why him and not me? And they got jealous. And jealousy is a sin. Being jealous of someone else, being envious of what somebody else has, is a sin in the Bible. And it caused them to hatch a plan, a very evil plan. They knew their king had one big flaw. Evan, what was his flaw? Uh, right. In gullible. Being gullible. The king was gullible. He was manipulatable. They knew that if they said the right things in the right way, they could get rid of Daniel. So they went to the king and they said, King, will you be my king for a minute, Evan? Oh, okay. 
So, hey, King Darius. What is it? Hey, I got an idea. What is it? You know, me and my guys were talking, and we decided, you know what? We all agree. You're the best king there ever was. Don't you think you're the best king there ever was? Mm -mm. You are. You're amazing. You're wonderful. Everybody says so. We walk down the street and say, hey, what do you think about King Darius? And everybody's like, we like King Darius. He's very nice. He's a good king. He's wise and just. And so you know what? We think we were talking over here. Yeah, I mean, take it or leave it. But we were thinking maybe you should pass a law that for 30 days, everybody in the land should only worship you. Don't you like that? Great idea. I mean, 10 days, then 20 days, then 30 days. I mean, all you have to do is wait 10 days three times. It's easy. So, you think it'd be a good idea if we pass a law? Everybody should worship you. I mean, they already agree you're a great king, so why not? Great idea. Great idea. You know um, but, oh, you know what? We forgot. We got to make a punishment. For anybody who doesn't obey. Hmm. Uh, I bet we could throw them in a den of lions. A den of lions. That is an excellent... You doesn't kill two birds with one stone. You get rid of your dissenters and we feed the lions. Win-win, right? Yeah, I was about to say that. That's excellent. So, thank you, King Darius. We're going to go make sure that decree is followed now. Well, now all our administrators needed to do was wait. Because Daniel, he had a reputation. What do you think his reputation was, Evan? I know what it was. What? Praying to God. He was faithful follower of God. So he was known to pray three times a day facing Jerusalem. So all they had to do was sit around and wait for him to break the law. Wait, 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 wait. There he is. Here he is in his window. And he's breaking the law. Oh, now oh, this is going to be fun. You okay, are so going to get out and we're going to get that promotion. <laughs> <laughs> so now they take Daniel and they take him to the king and they say, Hey, king, remember that law we passed? Do you remember King Darius? Mm, yeah. Uh, we caught Daniel praying to God. Uh, I'm pretty mad at him, but I'm also sad that we have to throw him in the lines and... Mm, well, Darius, or Darius was a faithful executioner of the law. He wasn't going to bend the law just because he liked Daniel. So, I guess we got to go. So, they walked up to the lion's den. But you know what Darius did? He leaned down to Daniel and he said, Let, <laughs> let your God help you. Good job. High five. Good job, Evan. This is actually from chapter 6. Verse 16a in the Bible, in the book of Daniel, it says, May your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. Even as he's throwing Daniel into the lion's den, he's hoping and, and kind of really crossing his fingers, hoping that Daniel's God is going to pull through and save him. Well, just like Meshach, Shirek, and Abednego were in the flames, were they alone? Uh, oh. They weren't alone. Who was with them? Lions and God. <laughs> no, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Who was in the furnace with Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego? God. God. So now, Daniel's thrown into the lion's den. Was he alone? No, he had God. But he wasn't just alone with God. He was also alone with God and the lions. Rawr! You're so very close. God actually sent an angel to watch over Daniel in the lion's den. And what did the angels do? What did the angel do to the lions? Paralyzed him. Obviously, I know that they shut the shut the shut the lion's mouth. But the only logical reason for that to be able to happen is by giving it a potion that will make it become paralyzed in order to make it not be able to hurt Daniel. Sure. Because, I mean, they've got claws and they can bite. Why not? They close the mouths of the lions is exactly what the Bible says, but sure, we could imagine them being completely paralyzed. I think that would have been a good time sitting around and petting the lions, but 
We don't know what Daniel was thinking as he was walking to the lion's den. He, he could have thought, just like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, thought, once they go in here, I'm going to die. I'm going to go in that den, and I'm going to perish. I am in my 60s. I'm an old man. I have done a lot in this life. He is probably going to take me. And he still went in. It doesn't say that they forced him in or drug him into that den. He went in. He was told to go in and they put him in there. They put a stone over the den and in the morning, King Darius wanted to know what happened to, King, to Daniel. So what did Darius do? Move the stone. He went out there early, early in the morning, removed the stone and he called down in there. David, where are you? Are you here? Ooh. And then, and then David was like, Daniel. right here. I'm not hurt. What? Daniel. Then, yeah. <laughs> Daniel, not da David. So Daniel called back. I'm here. Daniel came out, and the king. The Bible says in verse 23, the king was overjoyed and gave orders to take Daniel out of the den. So Daniel was taken out of the den uninjured. For he trusted in his God. The king gave a command and those men who had maliciously, that means evilly or badly, uh, accused Daniel were brought and thrown into the lion's den next. What? But not just them. Their children and their wives too. Their and, whole family. And also their grandfathers. So what does this lesson teach us? Um, actually, it teaches us quite a bit. We can learn about faithfulness to God, how... Daniel was brought through because he trusted in God and was obedient to God and continued to pray to God even though it was against the law. Yeah. He faced the punishment of man knowing that that was a possibility. Um, we can talk about Nebuchadnezzar. We could talk about uh, Darius and how even though he didn't believe in God himself, he could see the love of God in Daniel and kind of secretly was hoping Daniel might have been right. Correct, correct, we correct. can also talk about how the men who turned Daniel in and concocted this whole plan because it was out of a heart of selfishness and greed that they were not successful. And their plan to kill Daniel actually ended up killing themselves. So there's so many lessons we can learn from this, uh, this story in the Bible. And even some I've probably not even thought of. But at the end of the day, what I like to bring forth for the kids is this. Always Daniel tell the truth. Daniel was faithful to his God. He never ceased being faithful to God. Daniel ended up serving King Darius for the rest of his life. And it's something that I would like to tell children um, every time we read a story in the Bible like this is that it was his obedience. His obedience is what protected him. If we are obedient children of God, God will never leave us and he will protect us. So, did you have any questions at the end of this? Mm -mm -mm -mm. I've got the biggest question of all. What's that? If they... Remember the first martyr with Stephen? Mm-hmm. Why couldn't it be like that to lead people to God? Why couldn't that happen? Hmm. It's the biggest question of all. So why did God protect Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego, and not Stephen? Because it was not God's plan for Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, and David to die. But it was his plan for Stephen to die. <laughs> God will break, reach people in all kinds of different ways. And at the end of it, he's trying to reach as many souls as possible. By showing that God protects his people, he can reach a group of pagans. He can show that these people who worship many gods, that they they may not have it right. But you have to remember in the time of Stephen, Stephen was around people who already knew God. He was around Jews. He's not trying to convince the Jews that God is real. He's trying to convince people that the Son of God is real and that the new covenant has begun. So that's a whole lesson for another day. But anyways, um, we miss you all at Sunset Hills Baptist Church. We cannot wait till June so we can be with you again. And in the meantime, we'll keep bringing you little um, side children's lessons like this. And we cannot wait to uh, be in fellowship with you once more. All right, Evan, what you got to say? Always tell the truth and tell you face down. Blah, 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 blah. Ding, 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 ding. Shh. Ah, 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 ah. Ding, 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 
tell the truth again. Always tell the truth.